my friend asked, you know, Christy, after booking a cruise and spending the money on airfare, my wallet's a little short on cash. How can I make the best of my cruise, the port stops, and the onboard activities without a budget? And I said, I'll take that challenge. I just love the idea of figuring out how do you make the most of your cruise when you don't really have a lot of money for all those extras. So be sure to stay till the end when I share some ways to save on one of your biggest expenses when you get to the ports, and that's your excursion. The first thing I told her was to skip the drink package. I like the drink package, she says. I said, I know, me too. But on our upcoming six-day repositioning cruise, the cruise itself was $105 per day. Well, with gratuities, the cost of the drink package that does include Wi-Fi was $70 a day. That adds up to $840 for the week. I'd rather have that in my pocket and just pay for the drinks as we go. Don't worry though, you're gonna be able to drink without always paying the high price of the cruise line drinks because you can bring your own line. You can bring two bottles, regular size bottles, not the Magnums. And one of the things that I do is I get, I bring a bottle of Prosecco and in the morning I bring my refillable water bottle and I fill it up with cranberry juice. And then I make, they call it a poinsettia cocktail. Who knew? So one of the tips I learned early on was ask your steward to empty the mini fridge. Get all that stuff out of there. That stuff is not included in your cruise, in your drink package, nothing. So this is what happens. You get home after a long day. You're thirsty. It's filled with water. You're like, oh, I'm going to take that water out of there. Yeah, you'll get a nice hefty bill. So empty out all those things and then bring your own, well, this one's filled with something else to drink, but bring some water bottles that you can fill with water. And then you can even keep those in your fridge if you like them nice and cold like I do. The water right out of the tap is good. It's clean. We went to a seminar, a lecture when we were on our cruise last summer, and they talked about the process that the water goes through to become filtered on the ship. And it really does go through all the different processes Ending with a reverse osmosis, it's probably the cleanest water you'll ever drink. So for us, we just fill our water bottles right out of the sink. Here's a few quick tips. Bring your essentials from home. Bring the sunscreen. It's $30 on the cruise. You know those little tubes of toothpaste that you get when you go to the dentist for free? They're $4. So you want to make sure you bring your sunscreen, your deodorant, all those things. I'm going to link a video in the description below of what you need to make sure that you pack like in your toilet tube bag so that you don't get stuck going to the store on ship and getting those essentials. Here's another tip. Instead of going and getting them at the store on the ship, wait till you get in port and go get them there. There'll be less money. Next, you want to skip cruise line transfers. So that's when you book through the cruise line to pick you up at the airport and take you to the port. Now, you can get an Uber for much cheaper. In fact, we took public transportation in Vancouver. It costs us only $9.50 US to get from the port or get from the airport to the port. And it went like right there. It's at the airport. It goes right to the port, like a three minute walk to the port. So definitely skip those. Next, skip the spa treatments i know ladies you like to go to the spa but remember we're on a challenge to save money this is not going to help you they're like 150 dollars for a treatment a cheap treatment or a small treatment a short treatment next skip your specialty restaurants you think oh but i really wanted to try rudy's christy i know i know you did that's a hundred dollars for you and your husband you're you and your friends whoever's going save the money skip it Next, oh man, this is a big one. Avoid a huge bill. Turn your phone on airplane mode as soon as you get on the ship. Those can add up to like, I added it up. It'd be like $500 if you had it on the whole time. Even if you're not using it. Skip the photos. They're all over the ship. They want to take a photo of you. Oh, take a photo here and take a photo here. One time they had us, oh, they wrangled us. They got us into a room. And they took these photos like we were getting married or something. The package was going to be $500. We said, no, thank you. And we left. Avoid the shops. This is not hard for me. I don't really want to buy anything on the, in the shops. And if I'm going to buy anything, I usually am going to get it at the port. But let's just say, you're like, I like to get a t-shirt every time. All right, budget for your t-shirt. But 
Don't go there every day because they have sales all the time. It's very enticing. Next, avoid double tipping. You're paying a tip on everything. You're paying a tip to your cabin steward and you are paying gratuity on every drink, 18%. So you do not have to give extra. If you have a favorite bartender and he's super good to you, of course you can give him a tip. This one's a no-brainer. Avoid the casino. Remember, we're trying to save money, not spend it. And then skip the Wi-Fi. Any of you out there remember having to go find a phone booth? I mean, you're on a ship. Do you really need the Wi-Fi? So here's an idea. Just wait till you get into port. And that's when you can use the phone. Next, we're going to talk about one of the biggest costs of cruise vacations. But before we do, if you found anything, I mean anything, interesting, engaging, educational at all, please subscribe to this channel. I'm working hard to get to 700 subscribers. Will you be number 700? Maybe. You know that one of the biggest expenses on a cruise are the excursions. And something that people often do is they don't spend time to do some research before they get on the ship. I can't even believe how many people are lined up at the shore excursion line the first day trying to schedule excursions. That's not the way to go. Here are some ideas. First of all, you can start with your cruise line and see what do they offer. Like for example, they're gonna offer whale watching in Juneau, Alaska. Okay, now you know. Hey, there's whale watching in Juneau, Alaska. Maybe I can get a better deal at shoreexcursionsgroup.com or Viator, a couple third-party vendors that are gonna get you back to the ship. Otherwise, that's not good for their business, right? In addition to that, you can also go to places like whatsinport.com. I learned that from Gary over at Tips for Travelers. Whatsinport.com has hundreds of ports that they talk about what can you do there? What's the transportation like? So that's a good place to go to research. What can you do there? And often you can find things you can do on the cheap. Another place, you can look at one day itinerary. So just put in one day itineraries for Cabo San Lucas. I did that with my friend and we've had all sorts of things to do that wouldn't cost a lot of money. You wanna just not just go and think, I'm just gonna book whatever the cruise line offers or not go on excursion. You might be able to find something at a price you can afford. This summer, when we go to Juneau, Alaska, I want to go to the Mendenhall Glacier. Well, I did watch another video by Gary and Gary from Tips for Travelers, and he talked about how you can get on a city bus. The city bus takes you out to the Mendenhall Glacier. It drops you off like a half an hour, no, a half a mile walk to the visitor center. I can walk a half a mile. The city bus costs $4 round trip. The same exact excursion that you book through the cruise line costs you $65. So by just taking the bus, you save 60 bucks per person. I'm into that. You may be the kind of person that once you get off the ship and go into port, you want to eat what the locals eat. You're not eating what the locals eat. You're eating what the other tourists are eating. For me, eating when you get off the ship is a mistake. So to me, eat on the ship. So what does that mean? If you have a long day in port, go on your excursion or go do whatever you're going to do, then get back on the ship, eat, take a little break, a little rest, and then go back out for the rest of the day. Last summer, we spent $150 on mediocre food in town. I have no idea why we didn't just go back to the ship for lunch. Here's a tip from Don's family vacation. He says, always book your own hop-on, hop-off bus. You'll save half the price by doing so. Remember, you're on a cruise. Food, accommodations, entertainment already included. Here's your savings stack up. Avoid that drink package, $980 US. Bottle of water, save $280. Specialty dining, don't let them get you hooked in. You're gonna have plenty to eat of good food. Spa treatments, $150. Wi-Fi, $210. Just use the Wi-Fi when you get into your port. Cellular roaming fees. This one's the easiest one to save. Just turn your phone on airplane mode. Cruise line transfers. Take public transportation or an Uber. Onboard photos. They're lovely, but they're expensive. $100 and up. Forgotten toiletries. Watch my video. Know what to pack. Shore excursions. Research before you get on the cruise to make sure you're saving money. Finally, your stack up $2,650. I know you've got some tips for us. Leave them in the
the comments below. We all want to know how did you save money on your cruise. And if you want to save money on booking your cruise, make sure to watch this video next.